Good morning, guys. I wanted to share a project I'm doing. It's actually a commission project for somebody. I'm not showing me on the camera because I macrame in my pajamas sometimes. <laughs> anyway, um, so I am making this. It looks like a wall hanging, but what it is going to be is a curtain for a window. Um, and it's going to be a 33 inch long window by 25 and a half inch wide and I wanted to tell you some features about it and this will be posted after I give it to the customer <clears throat> okay so first of all this is on a solid oak rod it's one inch round dowel by uh, 36 inches long and I did cat's paw knots to cats to cast on um, the cat's paw is stronger um, than just doing a lark's head knot and if when you tug on it the cat's paw knot will actually just make it tighter so it's it's nice it's a nice knot for keeping things secure and keeping things the same length um the design she wanted she really likes um my diamond with a with a weaving texture to it so i decided to do that then she she likes the twisting um so i'm doing 18 square knots, half square knots, of course, um, all the way across next. And then I'm going to do a pattern of square knots that are going to go into a V. So I think that'll look pretty cool for a kitchen window. Um, and I would have wanted to tell you some other things I'm doing to make sure that when I do projects that the work is really good. A lot of measuring happens like throughout I think a lot of people would think that you just measure the cords the first time and that's it but that is not the case um, when you're doing something literally every single knot by hand there's opportunity for things to become um, you know offset from each other so measuring happens throughout the entire process um, and I'm constantly measuring from like the bottom of the rod to the next row and measuring at several different random areas throughout to make sure that my spacing is exact, especially when you get into like all these different shapes and weaving, you have to really make sure that everything lines up um, <clears throat> and counting these is important. So I always do exactly six seems to be my magic number there's not really a magic number but um you, when you're doing these half square knots and it wants to start turning um i find that like six is the perfect number for me so i count six and then i purposely like it'll want to turn so i'll purposely turn it and then this becomes my new left cord um and that just prevents unevenness between these so that they have the turn line in the exact same spot um, so I was thinking last night about the behind the scenes of fiber art and artists in general, really, there's just so much that we do that nobody really knows about because it's all behind the scenes and the hours of preparation and drawing and speaking to the client, um, to make sure that they're satisfied and they understand what they're going to get. Um, but at the same time, like people come to us with ideas and we're not going to copy another person's art. Um, they might like certain elements and we're, you know, we can do those elements. Um, but we certainly cannot take something that you find on Pinterest and just completely replicate it. That, that's just like not ethical. It's not creative. Um, and so there has to be a little bit of that give and take with the client and the artist. Um, so it's an interesting process, but anyways, I'm excited about this very much. Um, I got a new cord. I really, really like this braided cord. Um, it doesn't fray. I like that about it. And I think it's really pretty. Um, uh, this is from a company called Flora Knit. So anyways, uh, so far so good with you utilizing this cord. I like how it works in my hand. Um, there's so many cord companies out there, so you, I just feel like you just have to keep trying them. And let's see. Oh, yeah, I upgraded. So I got this. This is, I think, called the Ribba, R-I-B-B-A, if I'm saying that. Huh, I hope I'm saying that right. But it's from Ikea. Um, and it's adjustable. This has been, like, a game changer for me. 
So it's completely adjustable and I try to keep things, you want to keep things between your eye and your like chest level. Um, you don't want to have to cock your head up too much or have your arms like above your head. I have had, <clears throat> I had been doing that a lot and I noticed like some pain, some like arm pain. I mean like the hundreds and hundreds of knots that you're tying with your arms over your head. It's a lot when you're just doing it on a wall. So I know in the past I had said, well, you don't have to have any special setup and you don't have to, but I mean, it's repetitive. So you should be careful so you can continue to do your art and um, it's not really expensive. So it's a really, really nice thing to have. And then just these S hooks. I had these because <clears throat> I make plant hangers and this is perfect to hang from a rod, you know, a plant hanger from a rod. So I get these nice quality ones with the silicone edge on there so that it cannot damage people's curtain rods or anything like that. And therefore also I can use it on any of these projects because I know I'm not gonna injure anything of the clients. So um, these, these little things, instead of having cheap things, it makes like a big difference in the end. And um, <clears throat> Try to notice those things when you buy. I know people are really used to going to Home Goods and like other, I don't know, those those stores that like sell the overstock of things and just <clears throat> Amazon. You know, it's like things that are massive and would with a regular hands-on artist take hours and hours to go for like $30. And then I think people are devaluing artists. So it's important to look for these quality things and make sure that you realize that this is art. And um, if you want something that is original, it can never be replicated. It's made once, it's not made in a factory, then you have to, you know, pay for that. So anyways, I'm excited to take you along on this project and I'll update at a later time. Bye.